For centuries, science and religion have clashed, oftentimes with deadly results. Those who went against the church and those who needed more faith to explain how the world was created and works were excommunicated, persecuted, thrown in jail, and sometimes killed. It wasn't until recently that some religions are willing to accept science explanations in their religion, with, and with the deadly history, it's a relief to see the change amongst religious leadership. The Jewish people are among the few religions that try to balance science to help further explain the teachings of their Torah and its laws set for them. The focus of this presentation will be to explain the Jewish views on creation and evolution and explain how those beliefs came to be. To understand the Jewish faith, one has to read and understand the teachings of the Torah. The Torah is the first five books of Moses and is the founding and ethnic text of the Jewish religion. The five book names are Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, and Deuteronomy. These books carry the stories and laws that the Jewish people hold extremely sacred. However, most Jewish people take the Torah not at face value, but as teachings to interpret and live by. Scholar, author, and chairman of Jewish Studies at Arizona State University explains this idea in his book, Jewish Faith and Modern Science, on death and birth of Jewish philosophy. He states, The rabbinic claim is that learning the Torah is not merely an academic enterprise. The Torah cannot simply be read as a book. Rather, it is a system for living, a certain kind of life that governs every aspect of life, from birth to death. Furthermore, the Torah cannot be mastered living alone. It requires a community of equally committed living through their lives the way the Torah instructs. This thought is quite different from many other religions who take their moral text at face value and live by the rigidity of its laws. This is one of the first signs of progressive action taken by a religion and allows it to be more interpretive and more accepting of allowing science to combine with their religion. The oldest and first story taught in the Torah is the story of how the earth was created. The text states that the world was created in six days. Thus the heavens and the earth and all their array were completed. Since on the seventh day God was finished with the work he had been doing, he rested on the seventh day from all the work he had undertaken. From Genesis chapter 2 verses 1 through 2. This thought is something that is taught around the world, often at young ages, so that the next generation of Jewish children are amazed at the wonder of what their God has done. For the world to be created in six days would be an amazing feat. But those that have studied the universe are less inclined to believe it. In fact, scientists believe the world took millions of years to form, and so do some prominent Jewish figures. In fact, several rabbis have come forward explaining the creation with scientific evidence. For instance, Rabbi Mosh ben Nachman once wrote, In the first day, God created the energy, matter, and of all things he was finished with the main creation. After that, God created all other things from energy. Those statements show that the Jewish figures from all different periods of time and walks of life were willing to suggest that the world is not as old as the Torah may state, but in fact a series of attempts by God to create the perfect world. This is an extremely progressive thought for any religion, and especially for one of the world's oldest religions. It always has not been religion trying to incorporate science, though. In fact, there have been instances in history where science tries to incorporate God in all of their findings. For example, Aristotle often referred to God in his findings to give them a sense of absolute certainty. Samuelson states in his chapter on creation that Aristotle developed a set of demonstrations to show that God exists. He thought those proofs were absolute, that is, they demonstrate that a creator deity exists as the cause of any universe, be it this one or any number of possible universes. If that weren't proof enough that scientists are willing to incorporate God in their findings, scientists have also found underlying patterns in all walks of life that they feel can only be explained by having a creator. These numbers are called the five anthropic coincidences, and the most interesting and valuable of which are the series of numbers that relate to the building blocks of life. These numbers relate to the masses of electron, protons, and neurons. 
They are always the same numbers all the time. It is here that theologians like to point out that numbers so perfectly crafted must be the work of a divine creator. Samuelson goes on to state that with adequate reflection of the claims made in contemporary physical science about cosmology, it is more reasonable to believe that the universe was created than it is to believe that the universe is eternal or happened by chance to come into existence. The willingness of the Jewish scholars and rabbis to incorporate science in their teaching shows that when it comes to facing the bigger questions and findings in life, they would be willing to hear out any claim by modern-day scientists. As of the 19th century, the Jewish people began to find place in Western science and all the radical changes that were taking place. One of the biggest challenges they had to face was Charles Darwin's theory of evolution and natural selection. The initial reaction of the Jewish rabbis to Darwinism was neither accepting nor denying. Rabbi Elijah Benazma wrote, Were evolution to become a mainstay of scientific theory, it would not contradict the Torah as long as one understood it as having been guided by God. This was the thought for some time and is impressive to behold after other religions slandered Darwin for his theory and totally rejected any idea. However, by the early to mid-1900s, the majority of the Jewish people came to accept the existence of evolution as a fact and began to interpret their teachings with that in mind. The Rabbinic Council of America, or the RCA, has held several meetings over Darwinism to discuss where it fits alongside the Torah. They determined that it is fact and they needed to figure out how to teach it alongside their own ideals and morals. They maintain that the evolutionary theory, properly understood, is not incompatible with the belief of divine creator, nor with the first two chapters of Genesis. Jews sought to reconcile the truth of the Torah with that of science. This is a second strategy and was founded on the belief that the Torah, when correctly understood and interpreted, makes identical claims to science. Intelligent design is a theory that certain features of the universe and of living things are best explained by an intelligent cause, not an undirected process. So while Darwinism was accepted by the Jewish rabbis, they demanded that natural selection was God's will and the results of God's planning. Therefore, every bit of science or pattern that appears in this universe is God's will. There is, however, many conservative and other types of Jewish people that reject the idea of Darwinism altogether. Two of the biggest groups are the conservative and orthodox Jews. A prominent orthodox rabbi, Mosh Feinstein, suggested addressing the idea of Darwinism and evolution in this manner. Textbooks of secular studies that contain matter of heresy with respect to the creation of the world are certainly books of sectarianism that are forbidden to be taught. It is necessary to see that secular studies teachers do not teach them to students. If it is not possible to attain other books, it is necessary to tear out those pages from textbooks. While he has gained publicity for his comments and following, most people found them to be overbearing, harsh, and uncalled for. They are filled with too much hate and radical ideas to be taken seriously. When studying touchy subjects such as religion, it is always best to present both sides of the story to all involved so that they are informed of what the arguments surrounding them are. The Jewish leaders have done that for their people, and if not more than what is required. They have chosen a progressive path that caters to the needs of their people. There will always be new discoveries on the horizon, and with science advancing the way it is, they give us new ideas to help us understand the world we live in. The Jewish people are well prepared to handle what may be thrown their way. Their ability to overcome the obstacles is what keeps their faith and religious strong, and their continuing examples of modernization will help hold their place in the past and future.